Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you a game between Grandmaster Gergely Axel from Hungary and International Master Mehna Konstaki. The game was played in Arad Chess Festival from 2018 around 8. The yield difference between the two players is around 100 points in favor of Gergely. Let's see the game. White started with d4, knight to f6, c4, g6. Black wants to put the Darsker bishop on the long diagonal. Knight to c3, intending to play e4, placing another pawn in the center. Black has a chance to play d5 and enter the Groomfield, but in the game he played bishop to g7, e4, d6. And we have the King's India defense, and White has several ways to play against this setup with knight to f3, f3, bishop to e2, h3, f4. And from all these options, he chose f3, and this is the Zemish variation of the King's India defense. Short castle, black king is safe, and bishop to e3, developing a piece intending to play queen to d2 and long castle. Black can attack the center with e5, c5, or he can play knight to c6, a6, rook to b8, and b5. In the game, he chose c5. Black is offering a pawn, but white did not take it. If white takes the pawn, black would have compensation and more base activity. Let's see that line. d takes on c5, d takes on c5, queens are exchanged. And white is a pawn up. Knight to c6. Black is continuing his development. Knight g to e2. Knight to d7. Attacking the bishop, intending to go to e5, putting pressure on c4. Bishop to a3. Knight d to e5. Knight to f4. The bishop is defending the pawn. Knight to d4. Going forward, threatening to fork the king and the rook. Long castle. Bishop to a6. Pinning the knight, defending, a6, moving the pawn away from bishop attack, knight c to d5, cutting the communication between the rook and the knight, e takes on d5, rook takes on d5, knight takes on f3, rook takes on d5, bishop to e6, connecting the rooks, rook takes on d8, rook takes on d8, bishop to e2, attacking the knight, knight to d4, bishop to d3, with an equal position. In the game, white did not take the pawn. And he played knight g to e2. Black continue his development with knight to c6, d5, a move that gains space and attacks the knight. Usually attacking moves are good only if our opponent goes back, but in our case black can go forward to e5. Looking at c4, knight g3 defending the pawn, e6 attacking the center, bishop to e2 prepare a short castle, e takes on d5, c takes on d5, and the most play move for black in this position are a6 and h5. Black comes up with an interesting solution. He plays b5, sacrificing a pawn in order to get more activity for his pieces. White takes the pawn and the b-file is open for black rook. Rook to b8, queen to d2, white might castle long or short. And in some lines, white might play bishop to a6, exchanging the dark skirt bishops. h5, intending to play h4, kinking the knight, and h3. White was not cautious, and he did not play h4 to stop this h4 from black, and he played short castle, ignoring black's threat. Black continued with h4, knight to h1, h3, and knight to c3. This is a move back and black manages to open white king and takes on g2. King takes on g2. Knight to h5, controlling f4 and g3 squares. Also the bishop is looking on the long diagonal and also the queen can come to h4. Rook a to b1, moving the rook out from the diagonal. And black has several attacking moves in white territory with f5, queen to h4, rook to b4. Black chose rook to b4, looking to attack along the fourth rank. 
looking at d4 square, knight to f2, bringing the knight into the game, and let's see what would happen if white tries to kick away black rook with a3. We would have rook to d4, bishop takes on d4, c takes on d4, and white cannot take on d4 with the queen, because after knight to f4 check, king to f2, queen to h4 check, king to e3, and after bishop to a6, white king cannot run due to the discover check of picking up the queen. So in the game, we had knight to f2 and f5, threatening to trap the bishop with f4. Bishop to g5, attacking the queen, bishop to f6, bishop to h6, rook to d4, an intermediate move, attacking the queen, queen to c1, bishop to g7, bishop to g5, bishop to f6, bishop to h6, and after knight to f7, black declines the draw offer and offers white an exchange. In the game, white played bishop to e3. Let's see what happens if white takes the rook. After bishop to f8, we have bishop to g5, attacking the queen, queen to c2, rook to d2, attacking the queen one more time, queen to a4, knight to f4 check, king to h1, knight takes on e2, e takes on f5, bishop takes on f5, rook b to d1 trying to exchange the rooks, knight to knight takes on c3, attacking the queen, b takes on c3, bishop to c2, forking the queen and the rook, queen takes on a7, bishop takes on d1, knight takes on d1, queen takes on f8, black is a piece up and has a winning position. So in the game we had bishop to e3. Black continued with rook to b4, moving away from the attack. Another way was to give the exchange and get the Darsker bishop and take advantage of the Darsker that are weakened around white king. White continued with rook to g1. The problem with this move is that black can play f4 in this moment, attacking the bishop. And white cannot take this pawn because he's losing a piece. After bishop takes on f4, bishop takes on c3, b takes on c3, rook takes on b1, attacking the queen, queen 2 takes on b1, and knight takes on f4 check. So this line is not good for white. In the game, bishop to d2 was played, bishop to d4, placing the bishop on a central square, pinning the f2 knight, queen to e1, and queen to g5 check. This is not an attacking move, because white king can go to h1, and the rook attacks the queen. Usually, if attacking moves are not working, we should bring our least active piece into the game. That's why a good option for black would have been to bring the knight to e5. King to h1, queen to h4, attacking the knight one more time and pinning the h2 pawn. Knight to d3, attacking the rook, knight to g3 check, and white is forced to give the exchange back. If the king goes to g2, black mates with queen to h3. So rook takes on g3, f takes on g3, queen takes on g3, queens are exchanged, and rook to b7, moving away from the attack. In this position, black is an exchange up and white has an extra pawn. We have an endgame position and black should attack white weaknesses, which are backward, advanced, isolated and double pawns. White weaknesses in this position are g3, f3 and a2 pawns. But for the moment, white can defend the g3 and f3 pawns easily by bringing the king closer to them. In the game, knight to f4 was played. The drawback of this move is that e5 square is unprotected and black takes advantage of this by putting his knight to e5. Also, the rook is looking to the f file and black should try to open this file. As we know, bishops and rooks need open diagonals and files. King to g2, g5, kicking the knight away, knight to e6, 
Bishop takes on e6, d takes on e6, and black next move is targeted to open the f5 for his rook. And for this he took on f3 with the knight. White in the game tried e7, but this is a free pawn. Another try was to, to take the, the knight with the bishop, but after g4 deflecting the bishop, black recovers the piece. So, in the game we had e7, black took the pawn, bishop takes on f3, rook e to e f7, attacking the bishop one more time, and white cannot defend this with the rook, because after g4, uh, black gets the bishop. So we had in the game bishop to f4 giving the bishop. Black took the bishop e5. D takes on e5. Bishop to d5. Pinning the rook. f3 check. King to f1. King to g3 getting out of the pin. Bishop takes on f7 and rook to h8. Black is threatening mate on h1 and in this position white resigned. A possible continuation would be king to e1, rook to h1 check, king to d2, bishop takes on c3 check, b takes on c3, rook takes on b1, bishop to c4, f2, king to c2, and we have a new queen. Then black is winning, his uh, piece up. On the last round of Arad Chess Festival, Michnia draw his game and he managed to get his first GM norm. He managed to get 7 out of 9 points. Congratulations to Mikna and I'm pretty sure that he will get his GM title very soon. So this was the game between Gergely Axel and Mikna Kostaki. I hope you found this video useful. Please watch other games from my channel and leave some comments and suggestions in the comments section. See you next time. Bye.